السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم and welcome to another edition of Perspective on ITV My name is Faisal Patel and today in studio we have Dr. Firoz Osman the renowned author of the book Why Is That? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to Perspective Wa alaikum salam, thank you Faisal Okay, now what we're going to speak about today is some of the issues around Palestine and the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict now, Dr. Firoz, uh, you recently launched the book Why Israel with Suraya Daru. Now, before we get to that question, I want to forward the benefit of our viewers. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, where do you work? Um, what's your research? You know, a little bit about yourself for the viewers. Well, no, I am born and bred in Pretoria, and uh, I studied medicine in Egypt, in Alexandria. Yes. And uh, I'm in practice now. I work in the a uh, place called Kwandabele in Kwakafontein, the notorious Moloto Road. Uh, but, you know, the heartbeat of our organization is the Media Review Network. That is what we focus on. And because of the misrepresentation, the demonization and the verification of Muslims and Islam, we took on this debate challenging anybody who vilifies Islam uh, in the media, all media, print media, and, and on TV, and that is what our focus primarily is on. Like I was mentioning earlier, you recently launched a book, Why Israel, with Suraya Daru. Um, I've used it extensively as a reference work. Um, can you give us a little, for our viewers, uh, what is the book about, how did it go about that, that you started it, and, um, you know, I know it can be used as an excellent reference uh, for schools. Can you give the elaboration on the book? Well, you know, uh, the Media Review Network has been involved uh, in correcting some of the misrepresentations, as I mentioned earlier. And we find that the purveyors of Islamophobia emanated mainly from Hezlia, near Tel Aviv in yes. Israel. Yes. And it is the Zionist lobbies in South Africa that actually demonized Islam. So it was natural that our focus would come on to Israel and Palestine. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, the book Why Israel encapsulates the last 18 years of the work we have been doing. Yeah. So it is really our experience at the Media Review Network that uh, we have put into this book Why Israel. Why Israel itself, Soraya Dadu especially and myself, worked on it for the last four years. Yeah. Uh, many of the experiences of the stalwarts mm. that fought against apartheid in South Africa went to visit Israel as it is known mm. and they found that they were walking into apartheid all over again mm. and that is really uh, some of the challenges that we put into our book many of the people that we argue with discuss with on radio on in the newspapers have said you know, why are you picking on Israel? Of course. Uh, they say we're smaller than the Kruger National Park and, you know, all we want is a home for the Jewish people and why do you keep on picking on it? So this book entitled really came from them, Why Israel? And we ask the question, or they ask the question, Why Israel? And we really answer the question and we have found that Israel is a major corrupting influence not only in the region but actually for the entire world and this is what we expound in the book now obviously um, it's an excellent book how has it been received uh, i know probably among a lot of my friends and a lot of colleagues of mine uh, they, they say it's an excellent book but generally the populace of south africa the, the launch of the book has officially been done what was the the, the sort of the, the how was it received what was the atmosphere like Look, uh, the book is a big book, um, you know, it started off with 25 pages and we went on to 660 pages. It describes apartheid, we know what apartheid has done to the people, the oppressed people in this country, you know, it dehumanized the people and if people are dehumanized, what it really does is that, you know, you know more or know better than a mosquito where you just squash it and no one remorse, nobody comes to help you and so on. So this book really brings out how bad apartheid is. 
uh, we concentrate on part five and part six of, of, of our book. Um, however, it is much more than just apartheid uh, because we find that the Zionists have used the propaganda extensively, that we need to expose how they have actually worked in Palestine, exiling a lot of the people there, 800,000 people in the, in the first instance in 1948, and then again thereafter pushing them out. And yet they use the cover that Israel and Zionists is merely a democratic country that is espousing Western values and norms in a hostile region. But we know that the Western world is responsible for carrying out heinous crimes against the Israelis. And we find that the Palestinians are paying for that price. And we find that really an injustice to the Palestinians. Now, like I said, it's been widely received. Uh, it's uh, toward the, literally the whole country. Uh, you had a trade route war in Indonesia last week. Has there been any attempts to have the book blocked or any attempts to have the book stopped from being published, let's put it that way, for first instance, and from being uh, promoted as well? We used a, a small publisher, Porcupine Press. Uh, when we visited one or two other publishers, they declined, mm -hmm. given the sensitivity of the title and sensitivity of the book. There has been a Twitter campaign to remove the book from the shelves. We were going to launch it at Exclusive Books, but they declined, eventually saying that you know some, it may offend some of the readership. Uh, the campaign failed to remove the books at Exclusive Books, and all credit to them, they, they're still selling the book, and they're selling it well. Our launches um, at the Apartheid Museum, and we did it symbolically, uh, you will notice on the book, it is endorsed by people uh, who have a strong moral stature, people like Bishop Tutu. The foreword is written by Ronnie Kessler. Yes. This is not a book about Islam or Muslims versus Jew and Christian. He's a Jewish, culturally Jewish person. Mm -hmm. It is a Christian person who has endorsed the book. Okay. So it is really a book about human rights and human wrongs that is being done against the Palestinian people. So they have attempted to remove the books on the shelf unsuccessfully. And yes, it is getting widespread. Uh, and, and inshallah, that it will be used, as you mentioned earlier, as an excellent resource book, because it has been done painstakingly by Suraya Dadu, meticulously referenced. Uh, and we find that despite the fact that it is weighty, it, it does weigh 1.4 kilograms, that it will be used, we believe, uh, hopefully, by people as a reference book for the future to counter some of the lies that have been going on in that part of the world. As for, as for the reference book, do you think, do you see a possibility that you can possibly introduce as a textbook, perhaps, at maybe schools at universities? You know, we have uh, fortunately been sponsored to, to give 87 books in Kwasauteng. Every single library has got it. In KwaZulu Natal as well, every single library there. The universities and and the libraries at schools. Yes, certainly. I think, you know, that is something that Alistair Sparks mentioned when he reviewed the book. And I mentioned Alistair Sparks because he is a renowned and a veteran journalist who uh, has an unblotted um, anti-apartheid uh, reputation. And he said that uh, the book basically is a book that has been needed to give the other side of this perspective. It has been one-sided for too long. And this is one of the things about the book, that the Israeli narrative has penetrated unchallenged in all the media. And we, this book is a challenge to the single-minded narrative that has been given by the Israelis. And it is finally our chance to give the truth and we hope people will become aware of it and think about it, that this is an alternative to the history that has been promulgated by the Zionists. Okay. Dr. Fellows, uh, a lot of people are not aware of the Palestinian issue. How do we 
uh, as media people, uh, as yourself, as writers, as part of the MRN, uh, conscientize the South African public to create better awareness, to understand that what Israel is doing is wrong and what they are inflicting upon the Palestinian people is apartheid. Unfortunately, we're not a reading public. Uh, you know, Muslim communities are you know, not for reading. So I think ITP plays a very important role to create this awareness. Our book has been subdivided. It is 660 pages, but we thought about making it very simple, bite-sized chapters to make it easily absorbable and understandable. But this book also has gone to the libraries, it has gone to the schools, and we believe it must go to the opinion, ma opinion makers. We need to understand the dynamics of that situation on how the Palestinians have been struggling uh, to free themselves and that struggle parallels our struggle in South Africa. It is an apartheid state and we know how we can assist and our President Mandela did say that we in South Africa will never be free until other oppressed people in Absolutely. other parts in the world, Palestine, East Timor, etc., will be free. And we need to understand that we, until the Palestinians are liberated from oppression, we in South Africa will not be liberated. Zakla, Dr. Firoz, and uh, it was a pleasure having you on Perspective. And I'm actually overwhelmed by interviewing you. And uh, wish you all the success with the book. And inshallah, we can conscientize the South African public on, on this particular issue. Thank you very